The concept of cord cutting has gotten a considerable amount of attention of late as pay TV alternatives become more prominent. It appears that the trend is growing, but is it really? Some recent reports actually show that it is not, which is sparking debate. It's clear that many consumers are unhappy with pay TV models, but how far are they really willing to go? Well, to help us better understand what's going on, we're going to bring in Brian Gonzalez, the Director of Social Entertainment Labs at the Entertainment Technology Center at USC. Thanks for talking with us again, Brian. Oh, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Well, ISI Group released a report last month that showed a growing number of people have dropped their cable subscriptions and switched to broadband operators. But reports from Business Insider Intelligence and Bernstein Research suggest that, that pay TV subscribers are actually increasing. So, so which is it? You know, this is a great question, and the problem is that there are many challenges when it comes to cu cutting the cord. Um, some folks find everything they need from subscription services such as Netflix and Hulu Plus. But as an example, let's say you're big um, right now, um, March Madness, you know, you want to watch college basketball. It's not that easy to get all the games online. So it might work for some folks, uh, but for others, it, it, you know, it's just not enough. So you're seeing kind of this equilibrium shift. Uh, between folks who are dipping their toes in the water and testing it and then kind of heading back to the more traditional content. Mm -hmm. Right, so so do you think that the issue is that people are actually abandoning cable TV and moving to internet options or, or are they going to satellite TV and broadband operators? That's a good question. I think they are definitely taking a look at their packages that they're getting from cable companies and asking themselves, you know, does that full package really satisfy our needs? And so I've heard and I've seen a lot of folks who will step away and, you know, stop cable for, for a little while but realize, you know, I want to get back on it, but we'll try another option such as satellite because that's readily available just to see if it's cheaper and offers more. Right. Well, uh, WebPro News spoke with, with Boxy CEO Avner Ronan last month about the cable company's lobbying efforts with the FCC in order to encrypt basic cable programming. And he said, quote, they don't like the idea of competition. Those are organizations that have been a monopoly for many years. They didn't like the idea of competition from satellite providers. They didn't like IPTV competition. And now they don't like competition from the Internet, end quote. So is this a valid argument against the cable companies, in your opinion? I think that yes and no. Um, obviously, cable companies have built a huge infrastructure to deliver the network um, that we know today as cable, right? They actually lay wire all over cities. So for them, it's a huge investment, and they want to protect that. But with that said, um, you have to keep in mind when it comes to things like encryption, they're doing that to appease the people who, who they get the content from. You know, a lot of the cable um, provider, uh, I should say content creators, want their content protected in some way, shape, or form. So it's hard to figure out when, where kind of protecting their business model um, ends and then also where protecting content begins. It's, it's really kind of a mix, mixed ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, in a response uh, to, to some consumer complaints, Time Warner CEO recently laid out an option for, for a low-cost package of channels. Do you think that this will help cable companies and their efforts? Honestly, I do. Uh, and the reason for that is a lot of people see things like Hulu Plus at less than $10 a month and think that's very appealing. And in order for the cable companies to you know, really compete with that, especially in these t times, even though economically we're slowly coming back out of it, out of the recession, you know, still people are feeling the pinch. Um, and, and I think by creating these smaller, cheaper packages, you're really going to bring back some of the folks who might have gone away for a little bit. What about the, the metered usage internet subscription plan that, that Time Warner is testing in Texas? What do you think of this? I think when it comes to metered, that's going to be a little more... Um, interesting. And, and the reason I say that is because uh, users have kind of grown up in, in digital natives. The folks, the kids who are online all the time have grown up without limits. You know, they don't remember the old days of AOL where you had an, 100 hours a month or whatever it is. So they've kind of been using the web, you know, at their leisure in any way that they want. So as soon as you start to limit that, um, I think that they're going to run into that wall pretty quickly and, and they're going to push back and you're going to see a lot of consumer pushback on that. 
Right, and the implications going forward, you know, people are already speculating about the, the new types of meter readings, which they're, they're not happy about. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And a great example, um, the iPad 3 just came out, and one of the things that people need to think about is it has a, a, a more dense display, so you can do 1080p video, which is great. However, 1080p video means larger file sizes, right? And, and if you want higher quality video, you're going to need more bandwidth and more, you know, if that cap does exist, that cap has to be pretty big in order to allow for all this rich multimedia content into the home. Mm -hmm. Well, also, in, in terms of the news of, of Comcast rejecting Netflix's offer to partner, were you surprised by this? I was a little surprised. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Netflix positions itself. Because for a long time, Netflix saw themselves as the alternative, an alternative place where get to get your content. However, they found it really hard to get you know up-to-the-date new content because uh, content creators want to keep that with the cable companies um, and, and monetize it as much as possible. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, it, I'm glad that Netflix is attempting to um, you know, figure that out, but it's going to be really tough for them to partner with a Comcast or a Verizon Fios because they're going to have their own offerings that they want to brand themselves. Right, and it's sort of a, uh, you know, the cable companies are, are, are not extremely happy with, with companies such as Netflix because they feel like that the reason they're dealing with these issues are because uh, of these companies. Yeah, absolutely. So on one hand, it's positive for the consumer because right. it's causing Comcast and a lot of these companies to, you know, offer better things such as TV everywhere. I think before Netflix, Comcast, and Time Warner would have never offered that or thought about that. And so that's a positive for consumers. Um, but for cable providers, it's really a challenge of we have this huge infrastructure, we spent a lot of money, um, you know, how do we keep our user base so that we can continue providing as much content in a single package as possible? Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly, in spite of all this talk about cable TV dying, Nielsen told Business Insider that, that cable TV is actually expected to make more money than network TV this year. So how ironic is this? It is, and I think what we, or what a lot of people tend to forget is that 90% of uh, Americans that watch TV are cable subscribers, right? So a large chunk of it, cable or satellite subscribers, so a large chunk of them are already on that bandwagon. I think, though, what you're starting to see, again, goes back to because Netflix doesn't offer, let's say, the latest TV shows, and Hulu Plus, for some shows, has an eight-day window, you know, people are returning to cable or really looking to cable as, you know, getting their content, you know, as fresh and new as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, are Internet streaming video services the, the way of the future, and do you think that traditional TV models are dying? I think that definitely internet videos are the way of the future, but the biggest hurdle is bandwidth. I mean, you look at the average American household, they're looking at about 5 megabits per second. That's not very much, especially when you factor in, you know, large families. So a family of four, a mom, dad, and, and kids, if mom and dad are enjoying, you know, Hulu Plus on a big screen, and then the kids are doing YouTube and Skyping and a mm -hmm. bunch of other things, all of a sudden that bandwidth gets reduced to nothing, and I think that's a big hurdle. So in the short term, I think cable and satellite and broadcast are still very, you know, the best way, uh, most effective way and efficient way to distribute video. However, I see the future more as a hybrid. So you're going to still have, you know, live events on cable and TV are still going to be huge, but when it comes to maybe drama or scripted, you're going to have it on live, but it, it's going to be available in a package of somehow, you know, right after it shows live, and it will be seamless and easy to use. All right. Well, it's definitely an interesting debate, and your insights are, are very helpful. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. You're very welcome. With this Web Pro News Report, I'm Abby Johnson.